Hi, Dave Z here from Shapiro Mac. I wanted to put on video an issue that is constantly rising. I've done videos on it before. It's relating to the infamous Miranda rights that are read to individuals or should be read to individuals before they're questioned by the police. All the time, even just a few minutes ago, I had someone come in for a consultation and ask me if their case would be dismissed because they weren't read their rights. When people say I wasn't read my rights, they're referring to the litany that was established by the case of Miranda v. Arizona. I believe it to be a 1966 case, uh, whatever, is a case a long time ago in the 60s that established through uh, the Supreme Court that when a person is in custody and being interrogated, they must be advised that they have a constitutional right to remain silent, so to speak, and they also have a right to have an attorney present when they're answering questions. Now again, this boils down to whether the person is in custody and being interrogated. Interrogation generally means anything that is likely to elicit a response. So a question like, whose marijuana is this? That's obviously interrogation, but also two officers that are having a conversation saying, hey, you know, this guy Joe would be in his best interest to talk to us and we'd be lenient on him if he did. That would also likely elicit a response. Joe's in the back seat of the car and says, oh my God, you know, the marijuana's mine. That under those circumstances, he would likely have to be Mirandized. He's in the back of a car and the police are saying things that are likely to elicit a response. But there's been some new case law that's really interesting to me and sort of makes it a lot more difficult for individuals. It establishes what custody is. It used to be thought of that custody was any time a person's freedom of movement was curtailed. So, if you, or if you don't, or when a person doesn't feel free to leave. But it's a little bit more strict than that now that there's been some recent cases. It really is any curtailment of movement to a degree associated with a formal arrest. So the way that the cases are coming down the pipeline, it's almost that you actually have to be told by the police that you are under arrest and then asked questions for your statements to be suppressed. What the realistic outcome of all this is that many statements that are being elicited from individuals pre-arrest are coming into evidence even though the person is not free to leave. Uh, one very prime example is I had a case recently where an individual, the police were investigating an assault case and they came to the house where the assault was happening. The person that was alleged to have committed the assault didn't live at that house, and as soon as the police came, they wanted to leave. They went to go collect some things and walk out the door. The officer closed the door and said to the individual, sit down now, you are going nowhere. Those are his exact words, or something very close to that. And actually had another officer stand and guard that person, so he couldn't leave. And then the, eventually the investigative officer came over to this guy and said, what happened? While an officer standing over him and he's not able to leave, and he, and he made statements. He was never Mirandized, and rightly so, after a motions hearing, the court uh, decided that those statements were fair game, that an individual didn't have to be Mirandized under those circumstances because the person was not... Uh, his movement wasn't curtailed to a degree associated with a formal arrest. He wasn't handcuffed, even though he was told he couldn't leave and he was guarded. He wasn't handcuffed. So the reason why I'm putting this out is because I want people to understand that you, your case will not be dismissed if you're not Mirandized, even if you should have been Mirandized. That's the first thing. What could happen is your statements could be not admitted into evidence at trial. But more commonly these days, statements are coming into evidence so it is important that you understand that you have a, a fundamental right not to say anything when you're being investigated uh, it is within your right to to simply uh, request an attorney or assert uh, with the police that you would like to remain silent i always think of it that any evidence that's given to someone investigating a crime is like a point and if you give information, you're giving points, but the lack of information is simply a zero. There's nothing that comes from that. So it can, if, if a person is alleged to have committed a crime, it can only hurt them to, to talk about it. The best thing to do is to hire an attorney and allow that attorney to speak for you. That's the best thing that can be done.
All right, so I just wanted to put it out there, generate some discussion on the topic, give a little bit of information that I've recently uh, been looking into. So if you have any further questions about this, you can always leave comments at the bottom of the video or contact Shapiro Mac Direct at shapiromac.com, at howardcountypersonalinjury.com, howardcountydui.com, or 410-884-6100. All right, thanks.